Here's the Mad Finance Channel, and he's got Truth Shot Down. He had a live stream where they're talking about Christchurch, and his video got removed. And in this video here, he talks about how Woodrow Wobbles had a video that was taken down after about 15 seconds, he reckons. And um, you know, see if what's this one in the free speech? I'll get to that a bit later on. And I actually had a video up called Blanking the Blanks Across the Ditch version, taken down as well as you can see here. I didn't get a strike, but it was certainly taken down. Now, the reason I called it Blankety Blanks Across the Ditch version was that I didn't want to put any, after I'd seen Pyramids had gone down, because I put mine up after that, I didn't put in anything about New Zealand, about Terra, any names or anything. And because I didn't want to take it down straight away, but it did, it got taken down. I got it to 193 views. So they're not looking, they're not just also looking at obviously, um, words to search for, the AI is also looking at the content as well. There's no indication. I mean, it could be the case that someone thought, oh, let's blank the blanks here and go, hang on, what's this? And then complain. But no, I don't think that would have happened. I think they're monitoring everything. So they're keeping a real tight uh, rein on this one. It's going to be really hard to get videos up. So I'm going to put this one up. I'm not sure how long it's going to stay. So. Let's have a quick look at this article. I just wanted to show this one here. It says, um, Christchurch shooting, a dozen critical, 49 dead. And even the media have said this is a, um, New Zealand's Port Arthur, where, you know, if you recall back in the 90s, some guy supposedly shot up a lot of people down at Tasmania, again in a remote part, you know, way down in Tasmania, and where there's not much, uh, sort of witnesses and that. Same down here in Christchurch. It's a bit, quite a small place, I think, on the South Island of New Zealand. Now they could have run something like this anywhere in Europe, large city, city in Europe, even in Australia. They were about outside for a while. But they've gone for a really quite sort of out of the way place for this, you know, the sheer amount of people that they claim he died. Uh, the video that I put up was the sh where he supposedly went through and shot, and you can see the vision of him inside, supposedly inside this mosque. But he's shooting blanks, that's why I called it blanking his blanks. It's, you see the telltale um, flash out of the um, front of the rifle. You don't get that with a real bullet. Flash comes out because that's the the flash cartridge, the blank cartridge, just you know letting out some uh, the noise of the um, supposed gunshot. And there's no recoil. There's no bullet holes in any of the walls or anything like that. In fact, I've got a commentator now. I think you might have seen my video before it came down. Now he left a this comment on. Um, my, my other video hasn't been taken down yet, but that's, I don't have much vision there, just a bit of a news report. And he's gone through and taken the trouble, this is BSD Tech Aaron Haywood. It's obviously either my video or someone else's video, but he's got times and that where he's pointed out everything that's wrong. So go, go to have a look at that, um, that you can read it here, I guess, if you like. This just shows how many, this is why they're putting that video down, because if Aaron can pick all this stuff out, pretty quickly and even says at the bottom there were many more irregularities so there's no way they can let anybody see the um, that video so just back to this article a couple of things they're obviously going to bring in new new laws it says the death toll stands at 49 you know says, oh, it's like Port Arthur you know in and out of the weight place now charges have been laid now here's an important part she also announced compensation will be provided for families of the victims. That's what they did in the Burke Street uh, debacle, where it happened on a Friday, and by Monday they had like 200 million bucks ready to go <laughs> to give out as compensation outside of. I mean, most states in Australia, and I think New Zealand would have laws for you. If you're a victim, you can get some kind of compensation, but you've got to jump through a lot of hoops to get it. Whereas with this one, same as Burke Street um, hoax, false flag, they've put up... Um, it's being proactive, you know, they're throwing the money because they've got to pay off all the participants. Now, as far as the amount of people that have died, uh, I'll just get to this part here. Now, the 49 victims, only a small number have so far been identified. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very unusual. Uh, I would have thought you could identify anyone within the first 10 minutes, just looking at their wallets or just asking people around, what's this person's name? But only a small number have been identified. <laughs> So if you thought there was going to be, you know, pictures of all the 49 victims and all their names and all their backgrounds and you can verify that they've been killed, I don't think so because nobody did get killed. There are some deaths, but they didn't happen. In this, it's going to be like the Sisto fakery for that terror attack with the truck on fire and a guy getting shot dead, supposedly, that happened in Burke Street. So anyway, let's get going with this. New Zealand authorities are working quickly to remove all the bodies out of the mosque. So they're moving very quickly. They haven't even identified them yet. 
and through the coroner's office so they can return to their loved ones. Ah, so it's a rust job. For an Islamic funeral burial, is it traditionally within 24 hours? Oh, so we're going to have a lot of cultural and religious sensitivity here about releasing information. We had to give the bodies back very quickly. You know, we've, we, we've done it all, but, you know, we haven't got time to put up all and compile all the information. Look, this is all about cleaning up the mess. Once they've got the vision and their stories have been told by all the media, they got to, like, they're, not, they're clamping down on any videos being put up that show that it's fake, obviously. But they're also cleaning up um, all the loose ends. So a bit like 9-11 when, as soon as they could get in there, those whatever weapons were under that those buildings that brought them down, they melted the rock. They were still molten metal three weeks later. But as quickly as they could, they just pack, packaged everything up and sent it off to China so you couldn't see or do any post-event uh, investigation. And that's going to is what's happening with this one. It'll be very interesting to see how the court case goes. Now, this is interesting. This guy here, Nabi 71, moved in. So, so this Haj Doj Nabi guy, isn't it? He's probably dead, but it's going to be like the Sisto operation where Sisto was already dead. People, even commenters had said, who kind of lived in Melbourne, that said, you know, it was known that his health wasn't very good. So he's died, not at the hands of the terrorists, but that, that's how come he could have a state funeral. They've just incorporated his death into it. And as a reward, for doing that, uh, if you have a quick look here, Sisto Lane, name change murder for Pellegrinis. Now, they got, they got, they're naming streets after Sisto now. Now, all he was was a guy that served coffee and got killed. He didn't perform any heroics. He wasn't like um, you know, some World War One thinker that you know, leapt out of a trench and you know, killed ten, 10 of the enemy and saved a, a platoon or anything like that. He's just served coffee and died, you know, but he's getting a name. Uh, a, a lane named after him. Well, he's getting a lane named after him, so he got the state funeral, so that he, um, as as reward for them, his family allowing his death to be included. So I think that's what's going on with this Christchurch. You're going to have a few, because it says only 49 victims, and a small number have so far been identified. That means there's going to be a small number that they're going to release, such as this guy. But I believe that, like Sisto, he was probably already dead, and they're just incorporating it into it. Now, this is supposedly Brenton Tarrant, 28, in court today. Now, they've already showed his face on on TV, but they're not showing it. Oh, you know, he's pictures of him on all the media, but they're not showing it while he's in court. So, you know, this Brenton Tarrant guy, is he even still alive? You know, is this just an actor that looks a bit like him, that they could just parade him, but they're not showing his face? It's just cops there. Yeah, who knows? Like, it's just really unusual that they're hiding his face. So I think uh, that's, again, part of the clean-up. If people, you know, one of the things they do do is they start to um, tie up loose ends. And there's quite a few 9-11 witnesses that ended up, you know, dying prematurely. So there's his face there. Why can't they show it there? It's all a bit odd. And just down here, the world reacts. See, this was a global event, this, this, um, this hoax. Uh, you've got the Queen of England, Donald Trump. All these world leaders all commenting on it because that's how big this thing is. They're going to globally take possession of all the public assets and they're going to do the bail-in, take all your savings and then they're going to be in a perpetual tax regime where you'll be a debt slave and this is global. That's why they, you would think Look, this is too big to stage. No, that's no, not. They, they will go as big as they need to and in this case they've just got a bunch of actors that have, um, they were in that mosque and look, there's videos of where over in the Middle East there was a supposed terror attack where you see these people all laying in position and dead, you know, putting a bit of smoke. And so it's the same sort of thing with this. They have the means, they have the resources. Look, they have the means. The global debt is $274 trillion, which is, I think it's three times the global GDP. Now, they make money out of nothing. It, there should be only just as much currency as what's developed within the nations as people conduct commerce but there's three times more because they they make it up out of nothing and when you make it up out of nothing you can pay for anything you want that's why they can go as big as these operations here all right that's it for this one